I was asked about the uh, the purpose of the line filter. Uh, in this case, it's a GE refrigerator board, which I use um, for scrap. And uh, the L1 is right here. Neutral is right here. And it goes through the fuse and some capacitors, a ver uh, varistor, and uh, the choke right here. So what I did is I took a choke out of another board, and I, I'm using it for... Uh, just to make some tests, um, I'm using my signal generator to have uh, with two outputs. One is going to uh, the primary side of the choke, and the, the and then that's going out to channel one, which is actually this one right here, the yellow one. And then the second one is going to channel two, and that's the blue one. As you can see, the blue one is not changing the voltage; it stays constant at about 20 volts peak to peak, uh, whereas the uh, the one that's on the choke, you can see it actually is changing its amplitude, and uh, it really depends on the frequency that's receiving. But you can see how it's attenuating the the higher frequencies, uh, as well as uh, the some of the lower frequencies. Um, I found that about from about 500 hertz up to about uh, one point. Uh, or about two, yeah, two megahertz. Um, that's that's kind of the area that it likes to to amplify, and then everything else it starts to attenuate. Uh, so the lower or the higher it goes, um, then that attenuation means basically it's going to make it smaller. Um, uh, and so, so as you can see, I have uh, seven volts RMS. Voltage is actually being amplified with the higher frequency it goes up to about 160 after that once it gets into the higher frequency ranges of over about two megahertz uh, it sort it attenuates it and you can see it goes down to 10 volts so that is a job of one of the parts of the job of the choke is to filter out high frequencies that will um, interfere with the uh, circuit in this case the uh, refrigerator uh, control board. Now, I'm, I stopped it at 1.35 uh, megahertz, which is the resonant frequency for this choke. I'm getting 160 volts peak to peak, and then 20 volts peak to peak on channel two. So this RMS would be about 52 volts, um, and the peak would be, uh, well, a little more, uh, about 55 volts, and the uh, the peak would be um, 81 volts. Okay, so uh, right here, this is where that 162 volts peak to peak is. Well, that out of the way. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a standard vanilla LED. Really, you don't want to put any more than about three volts on this LED. It's uh, it's your standard LED. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here. As you can see, I'm going to turn the light off. It is glowing. It is not burning up. I'm going to ten, turn the uh, sine wave uh, generator sweep back on. You can see what happens with the... See, as, the, as it goes up in frequency, it turns off. In the lower frequencies, um, it glows bright. So, um, now... I, you may ask, well, how in the world is there 160 volts peak to peak and it's not burning out? Uh, and the answer is really simple is because it's not able to, uh, the, the source that I'm using is a voltage source. It's not a current source. This right here, this guy right here, is our current, our, our voltage source of 20 volts peak to peak. The choke is amplifying the voltage, but the current is being sacrificed because there's no such thing as free energy. And uh, and so, what I can do with this this uh, let's let's stop it just one second. I'm gonna go back to its peak, which is at 1.35 um, megahertz. You can see where back up to 160 uh, volts peak to peak. And you can see that when I touch it with my finger, 
I'm not getting shocked. Okay, and uh, the um, the reason for that is this is not a current source. This is voltage source. If uh, if we had a current source here that could generate a lot of current, like let's say a car battery or your household power, then uh, you know I'd be getting shocked. So. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what I had for you today. Look what it's really, a uh, really good use for the choke, which has a ferrite core in this case, uh, is to attenuate those high frequencies, making it so that uh, you have a good power supply that's that's got as as little interference as possible.